Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip and I'm promising you this week is really a quick tip. So this week we are going to talk about anisotropy, what it is and how you can create it using Octane. Now you have seen anisotropy quite often in my tutorials, mostly in the welcome screen here. So you can see if the light is sort of stretched and creates some lines as you can see here. This is anisotropy. And what is anisotropy? Basically it is a surface property, so not something that is physically occurring on the material, but it is occurring due to the surface structure of the object. So I made this scene here to explain it a little bit better. When you have objects with a smooth surface, you have reflections on them that are smooth also. But if you have surfaces that aren't smooth but um, have a regular pattern, you can see that the reflection repeats over and over again. And if I zoom out here, you can see there's this pattern forming. And this basically is called anisotropy. So where you can find that in the real world? Usually that comes from surface imperfections as scratches. So in this example, the scratches are very random, so they go in all sorts of directions. But there are other materials, for example, this one here, where the scratches are sort of aligned due to the manufacturing process. And due to this, we get anisotropy. So the reflection repeats over and over again with every valley and hill of the scratch. And this makes the surface roughness appear to be stretching in one direction more than in the other. The roughness always stretches 90 degrees offset to the scratch. So if you have the scratch here, the roughness stretches here. And if we go back to our Cinema 4D scene, you can also see that so the lines are going in this direction here and the stretch is going 90 degrees offset in this direction here. So let's get started within Cinema 4D and Octane. I've already prepared a small scene. I use the Maxim Ross HGRI again to get the lighting. And first of all, let's create a metal material and assign it to the cube and let's call it any. And you might have seen that inside of the material, there's an anisotropy tab. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. And if I move that anisotropy tab, nothing is happening. And this is because the anisotropy needs two things to be working. The first thing is some roughness. So let's go into the roughness and type in a value here. But if I go back, nothing is happening still. So the second thing that we need to adjust is the BSDF. Right now it's setting on Octane and the Octane BSDF is not supporting anisotropy. So we need to change it to anything other than Octane. I'm going with the GGX because I'm always going with the GGX. And as soon as I go back and then change the anisotropy here, you can see something is happening. So the material preview here is also a good indicator. So if we go into positive values, the stretching occurs in one direction. And if I go to negative values, the stretching is going in the other direction, 90 degrees offset from the first direction. You also might have noticed that I'm not using a value of one. This is like so often in 3D, one might be a little bit extreme. So I'm restricting myself to use values from zero to 0.9. So let's use 0.8 here. Let's talk a little bit about the inner workings of anisotropy. So anisotropy is relying on the UVs of the object to create the stretching. If I go and hit the tag here and go to tag and set the projection to cubic, nothing is happening. And this is because the projection is transferred to UVs internally to be handed off to Octane. So all Octane is seeing is still UVs. So what you can do now, if I go to the texture mode here and rotate that texture projection, you can see that our anisotropy is changing direction. And this is because the UVs are now projected in a different direction as before. 
So let's get back and set this to zero. There's another way you can deal with rotation and this is the rotation inside of the anisotropy. So if I go back to the anisotropy, there's a rotation slot here. So what I can do is bring in a float texture and pipe that into the rotation here. And if I change the value here now, then you can see the rotation is changing globally. Note that this effect will be applied on top of your projection. So if you have already rotated your projection, this will add up. So as we've seen in our title card in our real world example, there is also rotational anisotropy and we can also do that with some shader help. So let's do this by going in the tab menu and typing in gradient. I already have done that. So let's get a gradient generator and let's make the input ports a bit more visible. And I will pipe it into the specular for you to see what's going on. So right now we are getting a value from black to white in a linear fashion. But what we want is from the middle outwards to get something that has the same value in the same tangent space. So I already done the research about that and you need to choose the angular gradient. So let's pipe this into the rotation and let's see what's doing. And this is already looking great, but it's not completely correct. So what I'm looking for is in the preview as well as here, uh, that the highlight is going through the center without being bent or anything. You can try it on your own, but there's a lot of trial and error. So I'm just getting you the recipe as it is. So just use a transform node, stick it into the transform since we want to um, rotate the gradient a little bit, get in the rotation set and rotate it minus 90 degrees. And then what we also want to do is invert the gradient. So now we are sort of getting the lines going to the middle, but then we are getting some really weird bending here. And this is because right now our gamma is still left at 2.2. So this is because if we use the gradient in the diffuse or any visible layer, the gamma 2.2 will give us the correct visible result, but we are after the correct mathematical result. We want to get the mathematical correct value. What I mean by that is that on the opposite side of the merger between black and white, we need exactly a value of 0.5. And due to the gamma, this is shifted to the side. So let's just type in a gamma of one and we are getting the right results. You can also use the preview as an indicator again. So if you have a highlight moving through the center, you're doing it right. So let's get rid of the specular and let's see. Yes, that's what we want. Last but not least, if you're doing some projection work, you might be careful about the way the projection is handled. So let's give an example by going into the tab here and change that to a flat projection and the flat projection to be in an orientation of 90 degrees. So if I change to my axis here, to my move tool, you can see that the set axis is pointing upward and this is actually the direction of our projection. So despite the anisotropy here looking right, this is not the right way to project it and I can prove it. I will prove it by moving the object. So by rotating it, the anisotropy should stay still on top, but it's not. And to make that the case, we just simply need to rotate the projection by 180 degree. So right now, if we go back to our tool here, it's going from the top down and this is the projection we want. So if we go and move our cube again, rotate our cube again, you can see now the anisotropy on top is staying steady. And this is exactly the right result we are expecting from it. This small flaw can only happen if you project something in flat projection. If you're going for cubic, this effect cannot happen. So I'm using cubic most of the time, unless I have some special cases that require other mappings. And this concludes this week's quick tip. As always, 
Have a nice day and happy distorting. Bye.